Enjoy a narrated virtual tour of home-built and rotable aircraft exhibited in the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum's Udvarhazy Center. George Bogardus flew the little GB from Oregon to Washington, D.C. in 1947, 1949, and 1951. These three flights convinced Civil Aeronautic Administration officials and the Civil Aeronautics Board that amateurs could design and build light aircraft that were safe and capable of practical cross-country flights. The CAA enacted legislation in 1952 that, for the first time, sanctioned the registration and operation of amateur-built aircraft. On a dare from another pilot, Ray Stitz designed and built the Sky Baby at his home to prove that he could build the world's smallest man-carrying airplane. To test fly the tiny aircraft, Stitz hired Robert H. Starr, who took off on the first flight in April 1952. During the spring and summer, Starr flew the Sky Baby at air shows around the nation before Stitz retired the airplane in November. Designer Jim Beatty announced that his BD-5 would deliver tremendous performance at a minimal cost, particularly to those who purchased and built the kit designed for amateur construction. Tremendous enthusiasm for the airplane could not overcome a significant design weakness, the lack of a suitable engine. Bert Rutan invigorated the home-built aircraft movement when he began selling the plans to build his Very Ease, Very Easy, during the summer of 1976. A builder with average mechanical skills could construct the aircraft quickly and inexpensively, and the airplane was economical to fly and maintain. School teacher John Money designed the Money during the early 1980s and then coined the term air recreation vehicle to describe his airplane. It looked great just sitting on the ramp, performed well, and a handy person with average shop tools could construct one in his own garage. The design had much going for it, but like so many home-built aircraft before and since, a few key engineering lapses in the design, plus problems with the engine and propeller, relegated the Moni to the category of home-built aircraft that promised much in design but failed to deliver. In 1974, Tom Jewett and Jean Sheehan decided to design an airplane that could provide more flying enjoyment for less money than other home-built aircraft. They flew the Rutan Quickie to the Experimental Aircraft Association's annual gathering where it drew intense public interest and won the Outstanding New Design Award. Developed for a Department of Commerce competition to create an aerial Model T, the innovative two-seat AC-35 Autogyro could take off and land in 173 feet. After landing and folding back the rotors, the pilot could switch engine power to the rear drive wheels, allowing a street speed of 25 miles per hour. In 1934, the Bureau of Air Commerce recognized the Waterman Aeroplane as one of the two award-winning designs for its flipper, i.e. a light, easy-to-fly, and affordable aircraft competition. The Aeropeo was a two-place high-wing cabin monoplane with a transmission drive system that operated the propeller in the air and the rear wheels on the ground. The one-piece wing was removed by moving a lever and pins. It received FAA certification in the experimental category in 1957, but no market materialized. Designed by Robert Fulton, Jr., the Airphibian in 1950 became the first rotable aircraft approved by the Civil Aviation Administration. It could fly to an airport and then, after disengaging wings, tail, and the propeller, become a car. While a technical success as a flying car, the Airphibian did not become a marketable design due to the inherent compromise of air and car technologies and financial difficulties. If you would like to tour other aircraft in this series, 
Convenient links are in the description section below this video. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour of home-built and rotable aircraft displayed in the Stephen F. Udvar-Hazy Center of the National Air and Space Museum. The museum is in Chantilly, Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C., is free to visit, but there is a $15 parking fee. Here are YouTube suggested links on similar topics that you may enjoy.